Alright guys, have to go back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. I'm adopting seemingly adapting far quicker to the pro loot substitution than they were with General at the Prime Classic. They've explained exactly why this might be the case. Partly due to the lack of pressure on the team at the moment, but mainly due to the fact that Lillian Pro Loot seem to be effectively doppelgangers in terms of their gameplay. Very much to to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks also for 78,000 subscribers. Been a long time coming, but we got there eventually. Really appreciate it. If you guys are new, hit the sub button. Just love to see it. Appreciate all the support. First of all, this just from the subline is real quick. Of course, the major is going to be July 14th through the 17th. It wasn't going to be one week further back from this, but they've shortened the break after major three, now from three weeks down to two weeks, I believe. Then, of course, the three weeks of major four qualifiers, the kind of a chances event that is going on, I believe, simultaneously with the final weekend of the qualifiers for major four, then into the major four tournament in New York, where probably, at least based on current metrics, New York will have to have a really good performance if they want to qualify for the World Championships. They could, of course, do a good job before then but uh, yeah it honestly might come down to this tournament like certainly some of the championship qualifications are going to come down to this tourney which is rather exciting this also to mention I don't know if you guys mentioned this or saw this on the stream yesterday but uh, next week in terms of qualification games it's what they call a bounty week and some of the matches like three on Friday two on Saturday one on Sunday qualify for um, effectively $10,000 per match up for grabs so if you win your series here out of these particular series you get 10 grand now um, they really I'm pretty sure they haven't tweeted about this but uh, they did mention it on stream as you can see and they also had an article on their website about it thought it was kind of interesting so 60 grand I guess up for grabs over these six matches like um, I mean one of them being FaZe versus Optic I'm sure there's kind of you know the pride on the line in that type of series especially for FaZe after being 0 in 4 so far this season against Optic it's probably more valuable to them than a 10 grand split between the teams but still pretty cool to see no doubt I mean New York versus Paris maybe giving the subliners a free 10 grand but who knows how good Paris are of course they play a game later today we'll look at the matches for this evening in a few minutes time I thought that was rather interesting just to mention actually the FaZe versus Subliner series from yesterday. Of course, their face came out with a victory. Like, oh, well, BG really turned up on that map four. They get the job done. Close four to fair in the end. But again, yeah, Subliners, of course, the Prime Classic champions, just about fall short. And this is what Crimson said. I thought was kind of funny just in comparison to what the rest of his team said. GG's phase, 99.9% of players would talk about how close it was and how it could have went either way. Not me, not us. The squad needed that reality check. Got to push even harder. Glad it happened sooner rather than later. Back to work. So, thought it was actually cool from Crimson and I suppose he's kind of looking at um, the phase series that they played it's kind of a good idea to play phase this early because you know you win the prime classic maybe you slack off a little bit in scrims and vod review and this type of stuff take a few days off to kind of you know enjoy your victory all of a sudden you're into these games that actually mean more in terms of world championship qualification and trying to win the world championship which of course is crim six's aim at the end of the day and maybe this early reality check to the current status of their team is actually a pretty good thing but it was kind of funny how he says like you know 99 percent of players would say this not me not us and then kismet has this tweet where he says like you know could have went either way just have to reset it gave improving so kind of funny stuff this also I thought was quite remarkable actually all of these players on screen right now have beaten FaZe since the Modern Warfare World Championship of course where they did beat FaZe to win the World Championship apart from Crimsix apparently I, th I think he's like 0 in 9 against the FaZe guys since um, well since this tournament victory which is quite remarkable really like whenever that he seems to play them Simp and Abizi especially just seem to turn it up to 11 and always play really well against him like there always seems to be a bit of a kind of a back and forth between those guys like especially these tweets actually as well so we saw the subliner said like they tried to do the whole optic curse against FaZe didn't really work out for them though and the simp says in the reply gg's champs right so basically saying like look these guys are the champs kind of in the quotations saying that the, the championship victory at the prime classic doesn't really count to some degree we totally talked about some of the response to that the fact that okay like uh, how much does this event count yes it's not quite a major but still it certainly well ticks all the other boxes i think in terms of metrics that you need to count on events but a uh, simp maybe isn't so convinced he said gg's kind of champs as in yeah okay champs but it wasn't really a championship single elimination all that type of stuff this also from rc's i was gonna go on my no entertainment but we got the win versus fake optic right so i guess Arceus was kind of gonna say okay i'm not gonna tweet anything not gonna say anything stupid but at the end of the day he thought okay let's get screwed i'll do it anyway and mention the following fake optic because of course they tried but uh, yeah wasn't good enough on the day so they've certainly got some more well, further difficult matches to come but a good start for phase once again and also a very good start for optic they 3-0 los angeles grillers yesterday as shot he says team is looking saucy they seem to be very happy with their gameplay and the way pro loot had fit into their system as dashi says pro loot is nasty certainly a search and destroy he seemed to really turn it up and in the respawns like well he was kind 
kind of a kismet situation as we discussed yesterday. The other guys are kind of going off. And if anything, it's kind of an Illy situation, really, where Illy's kind of been doing that for quite some time, with the exception, really, of the major one grand finals, where Illy went off and had like a 1.2. Outside of that, usually Illy's, um, you know, a little bit negative or round about even, and the rest of the team are going off. And like a Dashi versus Selium this season is just, having, I mean, those guys are just battling every single series. Whatever Dashi does, Selium tries to outdo him in terms of KD. It's just absolutely absurd. The fact that these guys can put up just 1.3s on a casual series. And Dashi even had a 1.47 yesterday, I'm pretty sure. And as Prolute says, GG's Los Angeles Grillers, the green at wall is insane. So who's obviously happy about the situation? But people were kind of wondering, okay, exactly why did they seem to work out so much better than General? That was the big discussion after the Prime Classic. Are they going to keep General in the team? Is, um, you know, is Illy going to come back? Are they going to get another player in? Turns out Prolute is that man. They believe he's a much better fit for Illy's role than General was. And then as Rambo says right here, good few days of practice with Prolute prior to today's match led to a very solid performance from us today. We've definitely got the pieces to hold down the fort while Illy recovers. More work to do, of course. They play later on this evening up against Florida. This also from Sean Collins was a pretty cool article. Just I'll mention a couple of snippets in this. The entire thing will be linked for you guys down below. But I just really talking to Vera. That's the surname. Byron Vera is it is Prolute's full name. They also talked to Troy Sender Michaels about the coaching situation. And uh, well, as Sender says, he's a super smart kid. I love the way he thinks about the game. I have a lot of faith in the kids. And uh, well, actually, Byron goes on to say that being Prolute says, you know, Dally, while that being Illy is probably my best friend. We talk about Call of Duty sometimes, watch VOD together. We even have the same mind for COD and think about the game the same way. Cinder also says Byron is really good at search and he's come up with his search for the most part. He's even showing us things that the search and destroy scene is doing right now. If anything, we're going to say about the same, if not even get better in search and destroy with Prolet there. And of course, their search and destroy has been pretty good so far this season. And it also goes on to mention the fact that last year for the World Championship, when um, it seemed like Envoy and Scott might not be able to play due to the Delta Duo situation, they reached out to, to Prolet and also to Saints, I believe is what they say here, to try and make them happen. But actually, Saints, I think, declined the opportunity. It wasn't required anyway. But I think that's kind of what the Saints discussion was maybe briefly last night at the start of the flank. It wasn't recently. It was, you know, back at the World Championship last year. But yeah, good to see really from the coaching staff. They're really confident in Prolute and they believe that his search and destroy, like if anything, that's going to take their search and destroy to an even greater level than it was with Lily, which is quite something, right? Probably just because he brings some ideas across from the search and destroy amateur scene, which uh, they can apply to their gameplay. But so far this season, that has been the key differentiator, I think, for Optic really compared to previous years, is that they're winning their search and destroys on a much more regular basis. Wanted to show a couple of further clips here, actually. Firstly, one from Scump Stream I thought was rather interesting. You mentioned the fact that, okay, the, the pressure that is off them effectively by, like, every team that plays them is like, damn, we have to be an Optic. This is our yards. They've got a substitute, right? And, um, and Scump's like, okay, well, we've got no pressure on, but also Prolute's a nasty player and plays very similar to Illy in that sense. Dashi said the same thing in their interview last night on stream. And also Rambo basically echoed that on the flank last night, saying, look, if they're effectively doppelgangers in terms of their play style, it makes way more sense than having general. And that's why really as a team, we don't feel like we're going to regress at all if you're Optic. Guy's just oozing passion, but hopefully, I mean, I've been, I've been texting. I've been hoping him like speed of recovery and all that. I mean, obviously... Obviously we want Ender back, like we gotta make we gotta make the best of our situation while while we can, you know? Like we this is these are the cards. Let's make the best of it. I mean it's kinda like nice because we go into matches and like we have nothing to lose. If we lose, it's like you know, it's like well not whatever, but like we've had two days of practice with the fucker, you know? It's like <laughs> I feel like it's more pressure on other teams because they're like, they're tweaking. They're like, we can't lose to them with a sub. You know what I'm saying? What's up, Rambo Ray? Right? I, was, no. I was sorry, Pat had a question. What's, what's up, Rambo Ray? Right? Pat's been going nuts, man. This guy's been going nuts. What's, what's the question, Pat? Go Wait, ahead, why, Pat. Talk why aren't we playing with General? I have one, one answer for you. Prolute is literally Ender's doppelganger. Yeah. In every way, shape, and form. What? Except for the fact that Ender plays more of an error. But besides form. that, yeah. Huge win Yo, for you guys in 3-0 fashion. You guys played incredible. Yeah, I have to ask, won. what is it like? You know, what are the biggest differences between Prolute and Illy? And what do you think Prolute has kind of added to y'all's roster as a whole? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, Prolute and Ender are kind of, they don't really have that much differences, to be honest. Um, they kind of both, like, have, like, the same, like, COD values, I guess you could say. Um, they both play the game pretty similar, so it was for us. It was like an easy uh, swap out. So um, obviously, we're hoping that Ender gets healthy for uh, Major Three or the land. But um, for now, um, Pro is doing his thing. 
So, of course, Proilu was doing his thing yesterday, but it was kind of scum. But Dashi, the two MVPs of that series yesterday, no doubt about it. Today, I think it's going to be a different test, though, up against the Florida Mutineers because they took them down with General. That was kind of the first series they played with General at the Prime Classic. It was a comfortable 3-0 series victory in favour of the Mutineers. Optic kind of looked pretty lost at times, to be honest, with General in his kind of first series with the team. And the previous series they played with Illy, so they didn't have much adaptation time, whereas now they should be much better set here up against a team like Florida. And, of course, so well, a victory here would, would mean an awful lot for their kind of qualification hopes for Major 3 in a good qualification position. Now, um, well, this also just to mention real quick here from Vickle, I thought was kind of interesting just because they managed to miss this out, but they brought up a Prime Classic statistics and I believe Vickle had a, well, 0.98. Didn't get included, unfortunately. I think Carson from the CDL sides kind of apologised for this one. But look at this guy, man. Scraptical rap. People have been saying that the last few days. I thought it was kind of funny. So I mentioned it anyway. Like, um, this guy, of course, signed the contract with the Ultra guys. There was some question as to whether he could have potentially subbed in for this Optic team if the case, um, you know, if the case was there and he was actually able to because let's say he was a, still a free agent, right? and then signed the substitute contract that he has with the Ultra guys, but it does seem more than likely that have gone down the Prolute direction anyway with what we've seen over these last couple of minutes here. This is also makes just to mention real quick, because he mentions this yesterday, and um, I know we've seen people talk about this before, but as he says, this is our camo, lol. Let every team design their own camo, let us help, please. Like, uh, this is what the Ultra guys have in the game. Definitely, um, you know, leaves something to be desired. This is also from Lion Man, right? He makes this back in September 2021. Like, um, I mean, look, this is just an absolutely beautiful thing in comparison to what we actually have in the game itself. I know that he's actually made camos like this for Rainbow Six. I think it was maybe Chiefs, an Australian organization, I think they are, that he made a camo for in Rainbow Six, which is awesome. So hopefully, like, they listen to this at some point or another. This also, just to mention on the Claystone Fund, thought it was quite remarkable that, you know, some people were kind of talking trash to him on Twitter, and he was like, look, you guys haven't even been born as long as I've had a GB account. As he says, like, he signed up with a GB account since February 11th, 2005. That's just pretty absurd, to be honest. Some of the pro points numbers as well are pretty outrageous. He reckoned it was kind of like some of the number one on pro points on a lot of different games, or at least a couple of different games back in the day. But yeah, Clayce has been around quite some time. Hopefully he does get a spot back in the league because he's now 30, right? It'd be good to see an actual starter in the league be at least 30. And I'm sure looking at what Crim6 and Scump and the likes of Slasher have done lately, he knows that he's still got it and can still bring it to the table if he has the drive to compete, as seemingly he does. Let's dive then into the games going on later today. I do not know how to call many of these. Like, well, especially the first one and the last one, I don't really know. Like, we've got Paris versus London first up. Always kind of an interesting battle of the European organisations. But uh, of course, well, very different story in terms the actual bosses itself. I do feel like Paris have a very good chance indeed to win this series. I think I'm still going to take London just about because I want to have some faith that to actually Los Angeles Eves are pretty good the way they beat London yesterday. And Paris honestly could do something here. Like I think that honestly picking Paris, they might even be favourites in this series. I'm probably just going to favour London because I think that with one more day and with one more match with this kind of new composition they're working for, they might just have enough here. But I think this is going to be a really close series to be honest. Then the second one, we've got Surge versus Ultra. Like will Surge manage to bounce back? But then again, Ultra beat them pretty handily. 3-1 I believe it was. And of course, Toronto, like it was Seattle's respawn that was terrible at the Brown Classic. And Toronto are very good at search and destroy. So to me, I think Ultra will win this probably 3-1 again, like we saw before. Maybe Surge take a respawn this time, but not sure it's going to be enough for them. Then Optic versus Florida. I feel like this could be a really close one. Florida are a very good team. I think they're really hard to beat, to be honest. Whenever they lose series, I feel like they never get completely bodied. But uh, yeah, I think Optic 3-2 maybe. I feel like it could go to a game five. But in game fives, I'm not really, I don't have too much faith in Florida. If, they, if Florida want to win this series, I think they're going to have to win it in four. I feel like Optic will do a better job here with Pro than they do with General before. And then the final series of the day, Rocker versus LRG, I do not know how to call this one at all. Like, it is a toss up as far as I'm concerned. I might just take the Minnesota Rocker the way that LRG have been looking the last few days because they were, well, they were on a what, four series lost streak. It's been pretty rough for them. So might just take Rocker, but really don't know how to call the first and the last series here. But very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button and tells the YouTube gods it's a good video. I just like you should see it as well. And upgrade the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you as always. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you next time.